Hi guys, I'm Claire Aiken with the African Violet Plant Resource Center and I'm so excited that you're joining me today for our ultimate African Violet webinar. We're gonna go through everything you need to know about keeping these plants green and gorgeous, helping them to bloom and rebloom, keeping them healthy and growing your collection over the years. Let's get started. First, I just wanna take a moment to welcome you to the African Violet Plant Resource Center. No, I created this resource center because I wanted to offer everything that I know about growing African violets that I learned from my grandmother and my mother who are both really, really amazing African violet growers. And I wanted to just provide an area where you can find videos, tools, blog posts, and ask questions. We even have a Facebook group where you can join and post pictures of your plants and ask questions to the local experts in the group. And then I also wanna give you a coupon code to save 10% on our specialty African violet plant food. Now this was designed to help your African violets be as healthy as possible and to keep blooming year after year. It's really unique because you water weekly and weekly, meaning you water every week and not very strong, but a diluted amount. So there's no risk of burning your plant and they get that steady dose of nutrients that they need. So you can save 10% on your first order today. So let me tell you a little bit about my background and why I'm so passionate about these beautiful plants. So I grew up growing house plants and also growing hybrid tea roses outdoors. And I just love African violets because they're one of these timeless plants that have been around for many, many years. They make wonderful gifts. They're so common, yet they're not that easy to grow. What I really love about African violets is as you improve your growing skills, you can really see the benefits. So you may get an African violet that you keep alive for a few weeks, maybe it blooms once, but as you get better at growing them, you can get them to rebloom, you can get them to be you know, more vibrant in their color, to look healthier. And so it's a great plant for a beginner because you can really improve with your plant and see the benefits. Whereas a regular house plant that is just green, you know, you don't get that bloom and those colors and that sort of like satisfaction from doing well with your plant, if that makes sense. I love sharing my passion for houseplants with everybody, including my children. I have three kids and I'm teaching them about plants and they absolutely love flowers and African violets as well. And so I encourage you to, if you have kids or if you have children in your life, to share this hobby with them. It can be a great way for grandparents to bond with their grandkids or even you know, aunts and uncles to bond with their nieces and nephews by you know, buying plants together and growing plants with children. It's just a wonderful way to pass on this skill to the younger generation. So we're going to cover a lot today. I'm so excited that you're joining me because really the first step on your journey to becoming a better plant grower is curiosity and the desire to gain knowledge. And so today we're going to go over everything from the top problems that African violet growers face, how to troubleshoot and treat the top problems, how to keep your African violet healthy and happy, my favorite tools for success in growing these plants, and most importantly, how to get your plants to bloom year after year. First, I want to ask you, how do you feel when one of your houseplants dies? Now, we actually did a poll and we had hundreds of people answer. And I was interested in the answers because only 25% of people were unaffected by the death of a houseplant. Most people like me feel guilty or feel like a failure if their plant dies. So we have about 47% of people that are disappointed, about 25% of people that say it was okay. It's just a plant. Wasn't a big deal. I wish I could get there. And then about 21% of people feel guilty and a smaller portion of people feel even sad or depressed after a death of a houseplant. So I wanna encourage you to make your houseplant growing journey fun. Don't take it too personally. Don't let yourself get too upset when a plant dies. Realize, you know, they are just houseplants. You can throw them in the trash, you could start over. And luckily African violets tend to be pretty inexpensive these days. So don't be hard on yourself if you fail because you're learning and with each failure you grow and you get a little bit better. So with African violets, there's typically two types of problems. The first type of problem is the problem with the leaves. And so you can see you know brown spots mushy leaves uh you know issues with the leaves themselves and then the other type of problems is problems with the flowers so maybe the flowers are small or they're drying up maybe they're not blooming enough um, you know, maybe you're just having trouble getting your plant to flower in the first place. And so we'll kind of tackle these two types of problems separately. So when you think about growing any houseplant, 
It's helpful to think about how that plant grows in the wild. For me, I really like to think about what is the ideal state for this plant. And so for African violets, they grow in Africa on the floor of the rainforest. And so think about those conditions for a minute. It's incredibly humid, so 70% plus humidity. There is a lot of really bright indirect light, but almost no direct light because these plants are protected from the canopy of the rainforest. It also rains almost every single day. Um, and it, you know, it's incredibly warm and humid. And so maybe, you know, 70 to 80 degrees, very humid. And then think about the drainage for the plants in their natural habitat. So they have this amazing decomposing dirt that has all kinds of critters and decomposition going on. They have perfect drainage because the water is constantly basically going down through the dirt that they're growing in. And, um, you know, they're never sitting in water, but they're always in a moist environment. And so it's actually incredibly difficult to replicate mother nature inside the house. So you bring these poor plants inside, you put them in a pot so they no longer have great drainage. You put them in a house so they're no longer very humid. And then matching the light with the rainforest canopy is very, very difficult. You either have them in a window where maybe they're getting too much hot direct sunlight, or you have them in a dark area where they're not getting enough sunlight. And then think about the temperature. You know, the average house is about 68 degrees. It's a little on the chilly side and it's a little on the dry side. So these poor plants have a really hard time adapting to living amongst all the other African violets in the rainforest and then being alone in a pot in a house. And so we really wanna give them as much help as possible by using the right tools and uh, the right products for them. The other thing that they have in the wild that's really important is they have constant nutrition. So they have this soil that is constantly rejuvenated by decomposition, decaying plant matter, even animal matter, and all of sorts of you know bugs and beetles and worms. And so the soil is aerated and it's incredibly nutrient dense. Whereas if you put a plant in a, in a pot, where they get one amount of soil maybe for years, they quickly deplete that soil and they don't have any more nutrition. So it's really, really important to give them the proper soil for drainage, but also the proper nutrition so that they're not depleting their pot of all nutrition and then just growing sort of on an island in a vacuum without any food. And so I'll go through some of the common problems, but I think that's a good context to think about when you're bringing any plant inside your home is trying to match the conditions that they have natively. These plants actually need a lot of nutrition to grow, but also to bloom. They really need a lot of nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. And so it's really important to use a good African violet fertilizer. And I will link to the one that we make. We've designed this to be perfect for blooming African violets, and it's designed to be used every single time you water. So you don't have to remember the last time you watered. You just use it every single time you water, and it's a very diluted state, so it's not going to burn your plant, but it's gonna help your plant to have consistent nutrition and to bloom as often often and for as long as possible. So symptoms of undernourishment include stunted growth. So your plant looks okay, but it's not growing. Limp leaves, maybe leaves with yellow tips, shriveled up root systems, and lack of flowers. And so if you see any of these types of symptoms on your plant, you're gonna wanna make sure you're nourishing your plant on a regular basis with the nutrients that it needs. Any fertilizer that you use, you're gonna wanna make sure it's urea free. They really don't like urea and that it has the correct NPK ratio for your plant. I believe that a balanced fertilizer is best for African violets, so I recommend a 3-3-3 formula of NPK ratio. In addition to being a balanced fertilizer, one of the really cool things that we added to our African violet plant food is a sea kelp that provides humic acid, and this really helps to enhance the blooms and the color and the vibrancy of the blooms on your plant. So in addition to needing a really good plant food that has the NPK ratio that African violets need, I recommend you know thinking about the other nutrients that plants need. And so we create a house plant multivitamin that includes 21 essential minerals and vitamins for house plants. And so this is a really cool product if you want to invest in your plants. And then another product I recommend is our house plant probiotic. This is something that you actually dredge into the soil and it includes beneficial microorganisms that can really help improve the quality of the soil. So if you invest in your plant's health and the quality of your soil, it becomes a lot easier to care for your plant and keep it really happy. 
All right, so the second thing that I see happen all the time is not enough water. Now these plants can really dry out in a hurry. And like we talked about, they like very moist conditions. And so if you don't water your plant enough, it can get very dry. The root system can really desiccate. And then you'll see some of these common symptoms of not enough water. So leaves that look sort of burnt or browning, dry leaf tips, leaves curling upward, and flowers kind of dehydrating and falling off. So the solution to underwatering is to water properly. So I really enjoy bottom watering African violets where you put them in a basin of clean water and you allow them to soak up as much water as they need. And then of course, keeping your home really humid or putting them around other plants. And we'll talk about humidity in a little bit. So it's really important to get on a watering schedule with your African violet. And I recommend checking at least once a week to see how moist the soil is and whether or not it needs to be watered. So I always set a reminder on Fridays, I check all of my plants, but you can check your plant and just determine whether or not it needs to be watered on Fridays. If you don't know and you can't tell whether or not your plant needs to be watered, we actually make a really cool tool. It's a soil meter that you can stick into the soil and you can tell how wet the soil is. This really can help you determine when it's time to water your plant. And it comes with specific instructions for African violets. All right, the third culprit that I see happen all the time is too much water. And I'm really guilty of this. Most of my plants that I kill, I overwater and I kill them with kindness. And I see this a lot with people who, you know, really love their plants. They give them too much water or they water them too often and their plants end up dying. So the most common symptoms of overwatering is root rot, which is your roots will be completely mushy and sort of like uh, destroyed or um, the leaves will get really mushy and have brown spots and they can actually drop leaves. And so if you're seeing some of these symptoms, um, what you wanna do is just pop your plant out of the pot and take a look and see if it's wet, if it's mushy, if it looks like it's kind of rotting, that is a key sign. These plants do not like to sit in water. Um, they really like perfect drainage. And so if your plant is sitting in water, root rot is probably what's happening. We make a root rot treatment that can save your plant in 24 hours or less. It can stop root rot. So you're gonna wanna repot your African violet, use the root rot treatment on it, and then make sure to water correctly in the future and don't overwater your plant. So let's talk about how not to overwater your African violet. So the first thing is to use a really good soil that drains properly. So make sure that your container has drainage holes. That is number one. If you put your plant in something that doesn't have drainage holes, it certainly will die. I know it's really cute to see these in teapots or in teacups, but what you wanna do there is you wanna double pot. So you wanna have a small plastic container with drainage that goes into the teapot or into the teacup so that they still have aeration around their root system. Then using that well-draining African violet soil, and I will link to a few that I like below. Don't water if the soil is still wet from a previous watering. You are gonna to wanna to make sure the top inch of soil kind of dries out before you water again. And then depending on your growing conditions, I recommend not watering more than maybe once a week. If you water too often, your plant never has a chance for the roots to dry out and get the oxygen that they need. So you're gonna to wanna to get on a good watering schedule, know your plant, know the environment. It depends on how hot it is, how humid it is, how big your container is, how fast the soil drains. So it's really different for every specific plant, but you're gonna to wanna to make sure to build your intuition about when it's time to water your plant so that you're not overwatering. So the fourth common problem I see with African violets is too low of temperatures. So we talked about them living in the rainforest before. They really don't like cold temperatures. So I would say, you know, above 70 degrees is probably a good rule of thumb for African violets. Otherwise, they're just not going to be as happy as they could be. The other thing is they don't like changes in temperatures. So if you were going to, you know, have to err on the side of caution, I would say keep your temperature consistent throughout the day and night instead of having maybe like a very hot temperature during the day and very cold temperature at night. They like consistency. So some of the symptoms of too low temperatures are drooping leaves, curling leaves, dropping blooms, or the plant seems brittle or dry. One of the funky things that you can see when a plant is too cold is they create so much fuzz on the plant to try to stay warm that it looks like a very, very fuzzy African violet. Whereas a very healthy, happy African violet will have sort of like a medium amount of fuzz. So you're gonna wanna make sure you never position these plants near an air vent or an air conditioning vent. They're not gonna like that at all. And then you're gonna wanna make sure they're not too close to a window if it gets very cold outside. So the fifth problem that I see all the time is low humidity. And this is a very common problem with all houseplants, but particularly African violets that really like a humid atmosphere. 
So in their native environment, you're gonna see 70% plus humidity. So 70 to 80% humidity, which is very, very humid. And in addition, it's very warm. So in our homes, you know, typically we see 40 to 60% humidity and it depends on the home. If you live somewhere very dry or very cold, it may get down to, you know, 20 to 30% humidity, which they're really not gonna enjoy. Because African violets are a very porous plant and they have that sort of fuzz on them, if it's very dry, they can lose more water than they can actually absorb, causing dryness, brittleness, and their buds and their um, flowers can actually just start dropping to try to conserve water. So you're going to want to make sure to increase the relative humidity for your plants. So I would say try not to let the humidity in your home drop below 50% for African violets, and I know that can be challenging. One tip is to group all of your African violets together and that can create sort of a relative humidity ecosystem that increases the relative humidity for those plants. And that can work to increase the humidity around 10%. And then the next step is consider getting a humidifier. Some of these very small room humidifiers can increase the relative humidity 10 to 15%, or you could get a whole house humidifier. I have a whole house humidifier that really increases the relative humidity inside by around 20%. So it gets me to you know 45 to about 65. And so that makes all the difference in the world for my house plants. One thing to do before you address your humidity is to check it. So you can get a humidity meter. They're typically around $10 on Amazon. I will link to some of the ones I really like. And this can just really make sure that you know what the humidity is in your home before you actually start doing anything to change it because you might be wrong. For example, I live in San Diego and everyone says it's dry here, it's a desert. Well, it actually isn't that dry in my home. You know, it, near my house plants, typically runs around 45% humidity, which isn't that dry depending on the plant. And so you're gonna wanna just make sure you know the humidity before you work hard to make any changes. So going along with humidity, the next most common problem I see is mildew. And so if you live in a very humid place or if you overwater your plants, they can get mildew. And this is this powder mildew. It looks like sort of like a white uh, foamy mildew growing all over the leaves and the flowers of your plant. It commonly grows on the soil, on the top layer of soil, and it just looks sort of like a white uh, crust. And so this is powder mildew and it can kill your plant in a hurry. You're definitely gonna wanna treat it or really just remove that plant and um, you know throw that plant away so that it doesn't spread to your other plants. So mildew thrives in places with high humidity and low airflow. So you are gonna to wanna to make sure you have some airflow around your plants. They don't like wind, but they do like air flowing around them. If you really wanna to try to save your plant from powder mildew, you can try baking soda and water. So you basically take a spray bottle, combine half baking soda, half water, spray it all over your plant, and then rinse it off and really let it dry. Oftentimes it's really hard to get rid of this. So I would recommend you know considering starting from scratch with a new plant if you have powder mildew. So I would say probably Probably the most common problem I see with African violets is problems with light. So either too much light or not enough light. And so it can be really hard to get the lighting correct for your African violets because they like a lot of bright and direct light, but they absolutely do not like to be scorched and to be in direct sunlight. And so you wanna think about where you live and where your home faces. And so if you're in North America, you, you know, typically the sunlight is on the south side of your house and the sun rises in the east and it sets in the west. So this would mean that a south facing window would really be a good spot as long as your plant isn't directly in the sun because south facing windows are going to get the most sunlight all day long as the sun kind of goes along the horizon. Um, a west facing window is probably going to be the hottest and the brightest area in your house so you're going to want to avoid west facing windows and then an east facing window could be good because it gets that sort of like you know, indirect morning sunlight. However, they're gonna get less sunlight in an east facing window, maybe only six hours or so. And so if you have your African violets in east facing window and they're showing signs of not enough light, you may wanna move them to a south facing window. Depending on you where you are in the country, uh, if you're in the US, if you are in the southern part of the country, a north facing window could be a really good option to give you a lot of all day long sunlight. Um, but if you're very, very far north or if you're in Canada, a north facing window might not give you enough sunlight. So it just depends on where you live. Think about the orientation of your home, which way the windows face, and make sure that you're keeping them out of bright afternoon sun, but they're getting a lot of indirect light. So African violets really need at least eight hours of indirect light per day, and they're happiest if they get at least 12 hours. That's why either a north or south window is gonna be best. 
Now, I know it can be a little bit confusing if you need help determining how much light is in your home. The same soil meter that I talked about for determining when to water your plant, that actually comes with a light meter built in so you can see how bright it is for your plant. So you put it in the location that your plant is and you click it over to the light metric and then you can see what level of light your plant is getting in that location at that time of the day. So you just really wanna make sure that you're giving your plant as much indirect light as possible. And if you're confused about whether the direct light is too much, one easy way to tell is to feel your plant. If it feels hot to the touch, it's definitely getting scorched and it's definitely too bright of sunlight. So you'll know pretty quickly if you put your plant in a place that's too hot or too bright because it'll get leaf scorch, it'll get brown leaves, its flowers will drop, it'll just look like it got burnt. On the other hand, if your plant isn't getting enough light, usually it takes a little bit longer for you to see symptoms, but it can start looking leggy, like it's reaching for the sunlight, or just kind of unhappy and having slow growth in general. A lot of the symptoms of not enough light mimic not enough nutrients, so you'll sort of have to troubleshoot to figure out which one it is. All right, so the last problem that I wanna talk about that I see often is insects on an African violet. Now these can be a bit susceptible to the common houseplant insects. So we get spider mites, we get thrips, we get all kinds of insects coming on your plant and causing problems. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is if you see any insects on your plant, you're definitely gonna to wanna to treat them. There is no such good thing as a, a beneficial insect on a houseplant besides a ladybug, which isn't used that often indoors. So you're gonna to wanna to treat any insects that you see. So just, you know, take a magnifying glass look at your plant and if you see sort of like spider webs or insects crawling around on them you're going to want to treat the plant we make a spray called leaf armor spray that treats all types of insects so you just really soak your plant in it and then let it dry naturally and this lasts to uh, prevent insects in the future so i recommend checking out that product or just checking out a normal you know agricultural neem oil to spray on your plant you may want to do that outdoors because it does smell pretty bad but you definitely wanna make sure that these um, mites and um, thrips and things like that are not breeding and infecting your plant and causing problems in the future. They can also be very, very contagious, so you wanna make sure that you isolate any plants that do have insects on them. One telltale sign of insects on an African violet is very, very pale or limp leaves. Oftentimes you can't see the holes that the insects are leaving because they can be almost microscopic, but they're damaging your plant and they're causing problems to the leaves. So if you see very pale leaves or droopy leaves and you can't figure out why, it could be insects. So that wraps up the most common problems that I see with African violets, but I wanna encourage you guys to ask questions if you're having problems with your plant. You can chat us a question in the chat box, or you can join our Facebook group where we have hundreds and hundreds of African violet lovers who can answer your questions and look at pictures of your specific plant. I hope this webinar was helpful. Please share it on Facebook or Pinterest if it was helpful, and please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel on YouTube. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.